thanks for the invitation and uh, for having me on this, this call. Uh, again, my name is David Christie, CEO of Orford Mining. Orford uh, has been around for about four years. Uh, started off as a private company exploring for nickel in Quebec, and we're still uh, completely in Quebec. We have uh, about uh, six different properties in Quebec, which we'll, we'll run through. Uh, we're primarily a gold company, but I would say we have huge nickel optionality, uh, and that's from our beginnings. Uh, so we'll walk through that. Going to make some forward-looking statements. I'll have you read that at your leisure. So a, a few quick, quick things to realize about this company. First of all, we have a very strong strategic shareholder support with Alamos Gold owning 23%. They participate on a pro rata basis in all our financing since 2019. We just raised about, uh, well, over $6 million in the past four months in August and in December. Um, so we're well financed for the current year and the, and the projects we want to do. Uh, we have two key gold areas. The Kegavik project is what we believe is a brand new gold district discovery. Um, it covers an area in the far northern part of Quebec in the Cape Smith Belt. Uh, 390 square kilometers of land, about a 40 kilometer long uh, east-west uh, structural zone, and a number of different targets within it. Uh, in 2021, we spent about $3.8 million on the project. And this year, we'll spend a, a similar amount on that project. At, uh, we also have a project in, in the Jatel region, the Abitibi, another gold project. We just added to uh, what's there. We had two projects there, or three projects there already. We just added to that. Uh, with a new one, which we've acquired uh, in an option deal with Globex Mining. Uh, we believe this is our cornerstone asset in that area, and we're going to talk a bit about that. In total, there's 260 square kilometers of land there, uh, but the Jatel Eagle project, which we'll talk mostly about, uh, we believe has uh, some very good gold zones that haven't been drilled since, uh, uh, mostly since the late 80s, but a little bit in the late 90s, so it uh, is deserving of, of quite a bit of exploration work. And then lastly is our West Raglan project. This is a very high grade nickel copper PGM project, sits in the Raglan belt, the Cape Smith belt. Uh, the Raglan nickel mine that Extrata operates sits right beside us about 90 kilometers to the east. World-class asset that uh, Raglan operates there has more reserves today than when they opened the mine in the late 90s. We had the same grades on our project. We brought in a company called Wailu Metals in uh, 2021, uh, early 2021. So we're just at hitting the year mark of that uh, transaction. They can earn up to 80% 80 80 in the project by sending $25 million. You might know the name of Wailu through the, uh, the battle they had with BHB for the Norant uh, projects in Northwestern Ontario. So these guys are really interested in nickel and uh, there are partners on it we operate. Uh, so we'll talk about that. So just uh, gonna skip ahead here. Um, so uh, from a management team point of view, I'm the CEO. I've been in the business for well over 35 years, uh, both on the operating side and on the finance side. I was a geologist uh, for many years with uh, Agnico Eagle and others. Uh, I was on the uh, equity research side with TD and Scotia. Uh, and then I worked on the, uh, the buy side and managing funds with the Dundee Group. Uh, while I was there, I was actually CEO of Eagle Hill Exploration. That company is a company we took a four-way merger to create today's uh, Cisco Mining. And I've been on a number of other boards as well. Uh, Cindy Davis is our CFO. LJ St. John and Michelle Sorrentino will drive our, our exploration uh, efforts in, in the field. Uh, both are very experienced and, and been around a while. And then we have a very good uh, group of people on our board. Uh, this past year, John McCluskey joined our board. He's the CEO of Alamos Gold. So it's great to have John on our board. He doesn't join many boards. And he offers a great uh, amount of experience from uh, helping to drive many companies forward in the, in the world of um, mining and mining exploration. So just quickly looking at our market uh, capitalization slide here, you can see we have about 149 million shares outstanding. Uh, current market cap is around 23, 24 million. Uh, our shares have performed uh, sort of flat over the past number of months. We've been waiting on results uh, since uh, we finished our projects in the summer. Assay labs have been uh, remarkably slow. Uh, you can see our share holdings there. It's quite a mix of different groups. Uh, we've got Alamos and Corora uh, as, as our strategic shareholders. Then we have the case and a number of other funds, uh, and insiders and directors holding about 2%. When we look at where we are in the world, uh, I'm just gonna grab a pointer here. 
so up in the northern part of Quebec, this is uh, the Angava region. This is where the Cape Smith Belt or Raglan Belt is. So both our Kegavik project and West Raglan project sit here. And then down in the Abitibi with lots of infrastructure in the Jatel region is where our Jatel projects, uh, McClure East, Jatel Eagle, uh, Jatel Sales and Jatel Omega all sit in that area. So 260 square kilometers there, 814 square kilometers up here at West Raglan and 390 square kilometers at Kegavik. So I think you're going to, get a good sense here that we have a lot of acreage we have some big belts that we we own 100 um, percent and so we're really driving for camp scale size uh, projects uh, that have lots of potential across the entire uh, pro property we also own a couple of royalties down in columbia they came by way of a, a private company we bought for the cash it had on hand and it came with a couple of royalties So just zooming in on the Angava region of Northern Quebec, you can see our Kegavik project sitting here just north of uh, a disconformity. The rocks to the south are what we would call uh, ultramafic rocks. They tend to host the nickel sulfide deposits. You can see the Raglan deposit here and the Nunavik nickel deposit here, the Canadian royalty zones. Um, and then uh, our West Raglan project sitting in that same belt of rocks. So it has the potential to host both of these types of uh, nickel uh, sulfide deposits. And of course, with the battery group metals really having a, a, a big uh, bid on right now in the market, uh, this project here is getting a lot of attention. And that, that's why uh, groups like uh, Wailu, who is uh, spending the money on our project, are so interested in it, is the whole electric vehicle battery uh, market. Uh, the Kegavik project, of course, is a brand new gold district. We, uh, we discovered it. There was no uh, gold exploration here before at all. Uh, we believe we've discovered what is a new gold belt in Canada, which is quite extraordinary. Uh, we've only spent probably about 28, 29 weeks on the ground. As you can imagine, this is the far northern part of Quebec. So uh, the summers are short. So if you need to see the rocks, summers are short. Uh, but these are two world-class mines that operate year round. So, you know, you can operate year round. It's just if, if you need to see the ground, the snow's on there most of the year. So looking at the, the Kegavik project first, this is 40 kilometers end to end. Uh, you can see all the high grade numbers across the project, 648 grams, 122 grams, 253 grams, 23 grams, 149 grams. So very high grade numbers across the entire strike length of the project. So we know we have great gold endowment here. It's just a matter of finding uh, where the center of gravity is and, and, uh, and making that big discovery. That has been elusive to us to this point. Uh, in 2019, which you know we didn't drill in 2020, we drilled this past summer in 2021. Uh, we drilled six holes, all six of them hit gold. Uh, this is in the Interlake region. We think there's more work to be done here. And if this, if these some of these intersections were down in the Abitibi further south, uh, you would drill them. Uh, you drill, put a lot of drill holes in them, and probably make a low grade uh, open pit out of it. You know, 53 meters of 0.51 or 32 meters of 0.72. This is interesting stuff further south. Here it's not. Uh, but we have lots of uh, room to fill in here. This is 18 kilometer separation from this hole to hole number two here. So this year, what did we want to do up there? We had uh, made some till samples. These are where we sample the glacial overburden that the glaciers have smeared across the land. They're a great way uh, to get vectors uh, towards where the gold mineralization is in glaciated terrain. We, uh, we did a lot of samples in 2019. Uh, they pointed to an area along this IP Lake shear zone, which we have here. We're in this part of the property. Um, and so we wanted to do some fill-in just to the south here. Ice direction in this area is from south to north. So we know that the material that's getting smeared is coming from the south. Not a lot of ice movement in this area. Uh, so we, we wanted to go in here and get a cutoff, basically. We wanted to get zeros. So we did all these samples across the entire area. So we did a lot bigger uh, program than just that little area we're looking at, which was right here. We went in and we sampled and all these blue and green dots are very low numbers. You can see uh, zero to 75, basically uh, grains of gold per, uh, per 10 kilograms. Whereas the area that I was just showing you that where it was anomalous were very high uh, grains of gold per 10 kilograms. So the area to the north here, very high grade. The area to the south here, basically a cutoff. So we know that the gold is coming from somewhere uh, to the south uh, of this, uh, this structural zone. So that was the target this year was to drill some holes in that structural zone and see what we hit. We also have the Anik Boulder Trend, which extends across the entire structural zone and continues to the south. And it's now uh, like a 2.6 kilometer trend of, uh, of gold bearing uh, uh, samples from surface. So we know there's something very exciting. You know, we're getting 600 grams here, 90 grams, 19 grams, very high grade stuff. 
just an example of one of the, the samples we take them through. You can see this very angular boulder here. The guys have opened up this pit um, and you're getting all these sulfides in it. And this is grading at 90 grams per ton, 50 grams per ton sitting right here. Um, so very exciting stuff. And we continue to look for the source for that. We have some ideas this past summer to understand the vector of this mineralization, the same map, but north is to the right. Um, we did a lot of till samples around these, uh, these samples, the, around the boulder samples, to get a vector of movement for those samples. And so we're waiting on those results as we speak, and hopefully we can understand that soon. We're starting to believe that this, uh, this series of lakes, you can see them all line up here, is a structure, and that the material is being moved uh, in a northeasterly uh, uh, fashion like this, because that's the ice direction. And so just deposited just to the east of those lakes. We drilled a number of holes across the, the, the shear zone. Uh, hole number one here, hole number six, seven over in here. This is about a, a 1.6 kilometer uh, separation here. We hit iron information in all these holes. Uh, we're waiting on those results as we speak. Uh, assay labs, like I said, have been very slow. We expect the final uh, numbers of assays to come in soon and we'll put them all out as soon as they're all, all in our hands. Um, again, here, same thing. You can see lots of uh, conductors and, and we've drilled these holes across here. We hit sulfides, quartz veining in, in, in most of those holes across the shear zone. Let's skip through this. Just an example, one of the holes here. So I information in both these sections here. And again, here, more iron information, uh, shearing, uh, quartz mineralization, some pretty interesting looking stuff. Again, it was very early days. It was the first time we've been on that project. So, you know, when we look at what we did at the, on the Kigabic project this year, we cut off the till, uh, the glacial till train of gold grains. Uh, we identified a longer trend to the anic trend and we think we understand where it's coming from. Uh, intersected iron formation across the IP Lake shear zone within the shear and a number of other shear veins and, and, and cross structures were intersected. So we're waiting for those samples to come in. Uh, we hope to plan our, our new program soon. Uh, we've budgeted uh, 3,000 3, meters of drilling on this project this year. So West Raglan, uh, this is the nickel project. You see it sitting just south of Kigavik. A very high grade nickel, you can see that 2.81% uh, nickel, 0.77% copper. That's what they have at Raglan. Remember those grades. Remember, we actually have optioned this to YLU to earn in up to 20, 80%. This is our project. Those are the YLU terms. Uh, so it's all on our website if you, if you don't have time to look at that right now. We can see we've already made a number of discoveries across our project. Two different types of models here. This is the Raglan style model. You've got basically pearls on a string, so a series of small potty deposits that make up the, the whole deposit. Nickel to copper ratio is a three to one, so 3% nickel, 1% copper. The Canadian Rose deposits, lower grade, tends to be a one-to-one -one relationship, so, but it's still very economic. Canadian royalties will run out of ore what, from what we've been told in four or five years, uh, so the need to fill that concentrator is getting high. Looking at comparables, this is the Raglan deposit, all these dots here. Most of them are spread out over 25 kilometer uh, width. And most of our discoveries so far are over a 28 kilometer width. We have a 55 kilometer long property and they have a, a 55 kilometer uh, long spread between their furthest uh, deposits they've discovered. Geology is the same in both, mineralization is the same. Uh, we have basically the same type of deposit potential. That's just an example. One of the areas that have been drilled a lot on our projects called the frontier zone. Looks like this at surface, so 2,500 meter strike. Uh, we've drilled off these little pods within it, but there's lots of potential to fill that in. What did we do this year there? Uh, we did what we call a uh, superconducting quantum interference device, or SQUID as they short form it. It's a method of uh, geophysics that allows you to differentiate between formational conductors, uh, things that come with sediments like graphite, and sulfide conductors uh, that you expect to find with nickel sulfide. Uh, so it's the same method they've used at the Raglan deposit and uh, increase their discovery rate by uh, three or four times. So we've done a lot of that. Uh, we did uh, 80 grab samples, 1900 frost boil samples were taken. So lots of work was done this summer. And this coming summer, we expect to be drilling about 3000 meters on this project. We're waiting to talk to our joint venture partner there. And uh, once they've approved that, we'll move forward. Uh, that's just an example. Of some of the discoveries we made this year. So the yellow stars are new discoveries, sulfide discoveries at surface. Moving south, uh, this is the, uh, the Chattel area, the old Chattel uh, Eagle mine, uh, that Unique Eagle got its gold mining started. It's where my cursor is right now. 
This is the Casa Berardi break. It actually continues right over here to where uh, Cisco Mining has the uh, windfall deposit. Uh, so a, a great break uh, with lots of prolific gold mineralization through it. Uh, we have uh, a number of projects in that same break. It's a little closer view. So our Chattel Eagle project just sits to the south, Chattel South, McClure East sits right on the, the main break there. And then we have the Chattel Eagle project, which sits right on the break to the east of the Chattel Eagle project, or the Chattel, uh, the Eagle mine that uh, Igniku Eagle used to mine. And this big great patch up here is a JV that Igniku Eagle and uh, Maple Gold entered, uh, where Igniku will spend $18 million. So the area is active, there's lots going on, but it's been ignored for a long time. The Eagle Talbell mine closed down in 1993, and basically nothing had been done in this area since then. Uh, we staked these uh, three properties in uh, 2020. Um, and uh, shortly after that is when Igniku Eagle entered their JV with Maple Gold. And then we picked up this property just this past uh, fall uh, from Globex Mining. And we think it has been really underexplored. Basically no drilling there since the late 80s. There was a small drilling campaign in the 90s. We think it has great potential. It sits, here's the old uh, mines that we're sitting right here along the same structure that cuts through the project. The one zone that we think has the best potential is what we call the uh, uh, South Gold Zone, which is where this drilling is. I'm gonna give you a better view of that. This is a zone that had some very good intercepts, you know, three and a half grams over 4.3 meters, six grams over 2.8 meters, six grams over 2.7 meters. But you can see these huge swaths that have not, have not been filled in. So we're talking, you know, over 200 meters by 400 meters, 400 meters by 400 meters in here, uh, and no understanding of this zone. Uh, we've actually found out since that some of the drilling that was done in here, uh, when the old co the company that operated at the time in the 80s, which was Agnico, they redacted a lot of the assays that were submitted to the government because you didn't have to submit assays back then. So there's assays that we don't even know what they are. So the goal here is to go in this summer, or this actually in the next month, and we're going to drill a number of holes here and see if we can repeat some of these drill holes. And then we're going to see if we can prove some continuity in this area uh, and potentially get towards a resource at some point soon. These are the other two projects we have in the area. I'm not going to concentrate on those right now. And the Chateau Omega property, very large project with lots of potential, but we won't, uh, don't need to talk about that. We have great relationships with our, our First Nation partners in both areas, uh, both in the, the Sallywood area and down in the Chateau area. Uh, and we work closely with them all, and we continue to do that going forward. Uh, so just quickly summarizing the company, strong strategic shareholder support with uh, Alamos Gold at 23% and continuing to participate uh, and sitting on our board. Massive land position, what we believe is a new emerging gold district in uh, at Kigavik, and also a massive land position in, a, in an old gold district, the Jatel, that has had little attention since the late 80s. Uh, the, remember the Chateau Eagle Talbell mines were closed in 1993 and no one's really spent much time there. Potential discovery, what we believe are multi-million ounce gold deposits in both locations. Strong financial and technical partner, West Ragland with the Wailu Group. Uh, Wailu is uh, uh, the private equity fund of Andrew Forrest, who uh, runs the Fortescue Minerals, which is a very large uh, mining company in Australia. Uh, one of the wealthiest guys in Australia is Andrew Forrest. Uh, we're, in, uh, of course, a very safe and proven mining jurisdiction in Quebec. Um, and this year, if you look, we're going to probably drill around uh, seven and a half uh, thousand meters of uh, drilling. That's the most we've ever drilled in our, in our history. And together with the money that Wailu will spend, we're going to spend well over uh, six or seven million dollars, maybe eight. Uh, so that's, that's a big chunk of our market cap when you look at it. So that's a lot of upside going forward. And that's not, not even to mention we have a lot of results yet to come out from the West Ragland project in 2021 and the Kigavik project in 2021, as well as we're about to start drilling at the end of February on the Chattel Eagle project. So lots going on. Uh, we believe this is a, a great company to look at if you've got uh, gold exposure, if you want gold exposure or what we call a huge nickel optionality with our West Ragland project. Uh, one of the few nickel sulfide projects with high grade nickel at surface uh, that has not really been drilled. That's it, thank you. Any? Thank you, David. So a couple of questions here before we go. The first one from Patricia. You recently raised $4 million. What are the use of proceeds uh, for that? So the use of proceeds for that are, we're gonna drill the, the uh, Chattel Eagle project at the end of February. Uh, so we've been opening the roads there, getting that ready to drill. And we just finished a compilation on that project. And then we uh, will also uh, get back on, on onto the Kigavik project in the summer. 
and be drilling that and doing uh, geophysics and uh, you know groundwork uh, such as some more sampling and sam uh, other geological sampling. Sure. Next one. What will you do? Any work on West Wetland this year? Yes. Uh, well, we're we're waiting to meet with our, our partner, uh, but our anticipation is yes, we'll have a big program there. Yes, the final questions here from Ken is that when will you expect the warranties to, to kick in uh, in a few years time, maybe? Or... I, I, that, that's a good question. I don't know. There's two companies active on those royalties right now. So uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a wait and see, you know, if, if they actually develop some uh, resources and put something in production. You know, they are in Colombia and Colombia is not the easiest place to always get things uh, done quickly. Sure, David. Uh, thank you again for your time here. We're running out of time, but uh, we're really uh, glad you're here with us here today. Yeah, thank you, Gilbert. It was great. Thank you.